Need help fighting anxiety? This is my final installment on series on fighting depression, but this is the most important piece of the puzzle. So stay tuned and I'll share with you what that is. Stay tuned and watch till the end. Thanks. Bye bye. Hi, this is Dr. Monty, Dr. Monty Miller, with the psychologist with Peace in the Storms Ministries. I've been working for over 25 years working in nursing homes, trying to help people with terrible storms in their life, terrible losses, to be able to cope with it. I've learned taking what I've learned from them and applying it, trying to help other people with your, your, your storms, trying to help you find peace. Today we're dealing with anxiety. I've watched some of my other videos that are very important to help you understand your body and your mind on fighting this anxiety. But there's one very important piece that I'm missing. I'm a Christian psychologist. I believe that the best way to understand ourselves and to fight emotional health issues and depression and anxiety is through the Bible, through Christ. And so I've got to include that as a big important part of the picture of what we're dealing with here. So anxiety is kind of a tough thing because it's so many different ways that you can be anxious, so many different situations. So anxiety can be terrible, so it's hard to apply one solution or even several solutions to everybody. But let, let me give you a try. One thing here, when you have faith in God, as most people do listening, that how can you apply that to your anxiety? Now I know you have faith in God, we call him Lord, we call Jesus Lord, but is he really our Lord? I think if you put it down to one word to help anxiety, I'd really say submission. Are you submitting yourself to Christ? Are you acknowledging that He is your God and He's your loving Father? He is there for you and He's going to protect you and take care of you. That doesn't mean bad things won't happen to you in this world, but it means things aren't ever going to be fully tragic like we're afraid that they will be. Even simple little things can just drive us crazy and get our heart racing, but really there's really no major threat like we think they are. The big difference between normal issues and problems and when something becomes a big major mental health issue is when we, we basically turn a mountain out of a molehill. Again, I don't want to minimize any of your problems to say it's not a big mountain because sometimes there are big mountains in your path. But from God's perspective, we have something that's, okay, we, we have something that's bad, it really may be bad, but we make it terrible and tragic. What if someone rejects me? That would hurt my feelings. Yeah, and that really would hurt. But we make it like, oh my gosh, no one will ever love me again. I'll be alone and desperate my whole entire life. That's a mountain into a molehill, a molehill into a mountain. So that's one thing that we have to fight and we have to apply our faith to be able to help with that. So when you're in the midst of a storm and you're starting to get anxious, your heart rate's starting to rise and you're starting to get overwhelmed with your fears and thoughts, First off, do what I've already taught you to do in other videos. Take a deep breath and relax and breathe. That'll help blood flow get up to the front part of your brain so that you can, can, your emotions will be more calm and you can think through things better. Now once you're thinking through things better, that's when you apply your faith. That's when you say, okay, I'm a child of God. God loves me. God is always good. He's there to protect me. You say these kind of things that you know to be true even if you don't feel them. Because the more, that's how cognitive behavioral therapy works. The more you say the things you know are true, then your feelings start to follow the truth of those feelings and you start to get more calm. But they are true, right? You do have your faith is not just a fairy tale feeling, it's a true fact of life that you've got a God who loves you, who made you, and who cares about you. But here's the thing how to do that. Do you really believe it? Ask yourself that in the midst of the moment. Like I've said uh, in the past, admit your problems, admit some fears, admit sinful feelings, admit your doubts, but get them out on the table and say them to yourself and then ask, then counteract those arguments. So if you have those fears like I can't do this, I can't do this, or what if this happens, what if this happens, okay, do you believe in God or not? Ask yourself that. Do you really? A, a lot of sin comes down to pride and humility. That's what all pride, all sin is, is are we going to do things our way or are we going to do things God's way? Adam and Eve wanted to do things their way and not listen to God. So what are you going to do in the midst of this anxiety? Are you really going to follow God? Are you going to submit and say, God, you are God, I am not. You are the creator, I'm the created. I'm here to worship you, you are not here to serve me. 
you have to really say those things to yourself and yell at yourself a little bit. Coach yourself, cheer yourself on. You have to have the positive voice inside your head that's true, the Holy Spirit in your head that's whispering true voices. Listen to that, ask for that voice from God. God, what is the truth on this situation? The truth is, yeah, it might be bad, but is it tragic? No, no, like I said in the last video, look at the worst case scenario and see if you can do it. But you can only get through the worst case scenario and look at it openly and face your fears and learn to conquer them once you really rely on God. We say let go and let God. That phrase in and of itself has never really meant much to me directly until I really put it in my own words and apply it. I've got to give up and submit. I love that word submit. Submit to God and know that you're, He's above you. And know that He's always good. Know that He's your Father and He cares. Bad things still may happen, but He wants you to first and foremost learn to trust in Him, even when you don't understand things. That can be hard for a lot of us, but you've got to submit and say, God, even if this happens, if it's your will, so be it. I hope that things happen and I'm praying for a miracle on this, but even if not, you're still God and you still deserve to be praised and you still deserve to be honored and you still deserve my submission to you. So God, I'm giving this to you, lay it on the table, lay them like, a, like okay, I give up to you, God. A great exercise my daughter and I used to do when she was young is the trust exercise. When she was little, she'd stand up on the kitchen counter and she would put her arms like this, stand up behind me, body stiff, she'd face it away from me and she'd fall back. And I'd have my arms right, right there ready to catch her. And at first it's like my hands were right there. So she just started moving back a little bit. She'd feel her strong dad's arms right on her. But then, okay, I'd do it again. And I'd move a little bit, another couple inches back. And then eventually to where she was full, free falling backwards and I'd catch her. And she trusted me. She trusted me. And that's how we need to be with our God. I want you to imagine that in your head when you're facing your anxiety. Say, God, if I go bankrupt, I go bankrupt. If this business deal doesn't work out and I lose my house, I lose my house. You're not gonna have me a homeless. I'm sure you'll provide something for me. If my boyfriend rejects me, if my girlfriend rejects me, I'm gonna be okay, it will hurt, but I'm not gonna die alone. You will always be with me and other people will always be with me. If I go and get rejected, I've asked a girl out and she says no and laughs in my face, oh well, her loss. It hurt, it'll be lonely, I'll feel like a fool. I know how that is, I wanna be liked, I'm sensitive. I do cry, I do get upset. But it's not the end of the world. You've really gotta go through that in your mind and say, God, I trust you, you are real to me. You're not just a name only that I'm a Christian. This is a real relationship and I'm really gonna trust you in this. You know, sometimes God takes us through storms Sometimes he develops storms and he causes them. It is possible. He is God, he gets to do that. But a lot of times things just happen because it's a sinful fallen world. It's not your fault. Maybe it is your fault. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're a victim. True. But if you lean on God, God will want to use that storm. He might have allowed it to happen in the first place because he wants to teach you a better lesson that will, in the end, make you happier. He wants you to learn to trust him more. Honestly, that's what this whole life is about. This whole life is a practice world. It's pre-season, getting us to learn what we need to learn, to learn that God is up here and we're down here, and we're meant to serve Him and worship Him and praise Him, and He's worthy of it. And we are not worthy of much of anything, but He loves us so much that we are worthy. We're worthy of His whole attention and love and devotion to us. He might be dragging you through the mud or letting you go through the mud, so that you can learn to trust Him more. And once you get that deeper level of faith and trust, you're so much happier. You can find peace in any storm. As the Apostle Paul said, you can find contentment no matter what you're going through in your life. And Paul knew suffering. He knew hurt hardships, and yet he learned to be content in all things. That's the way to find peace in your storm, is by submission to God and saying, okay, I'm not gonna get my way on this one, Lord. It may go the wrong way. It may be bad. My child might even die if you're worried about those kind of things. Bad things can happen, but in the end, it all works out. Even in the worst case scenario of this life, it still works out in the end and it'll work out wonderfully. Heaven is real and it's coming and God will fulfill all his promises to us. Even though we don't deserve it, 
He's gracious and he'll give it to us anyway. So please say those positive voices. Repeat those things that you know to be true. Go find Bible verses that say all this, and I, which I can list out. But trust in God fully. Let go, fall back. Even if something bad happens, he's going to catch you and it will be okay. That's the way to find peace in your storm. Please like the video, give it a thumbs up, click on the subscribe button, click on the little bell to get more notifications of future videos, comment, share this with other people. Other people are hurting and, 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 and anxious too. YouTube won't show this to people who need it unless other people like it. This is a weird way YouTube works. So please help me out and help others who need to hear this video out by, by corresponding, by responding to this video. Thank you so much and I appreciate it. God bless. Bye-bye.